Today down in the comments, I want to know what is your favorite pet in horror? This doesn't have to be a killer animal, just has to be someone's pet in a horror movie or a horror book. Uh, just what's your favorite one? Hello, I'm Adam Caesar. This is Project Black T-Shirt, the channel where we take a new or a reissue horror movie and then pair it with a horror book that you might like to read if you like that movie. Make sure you like this video and subscribe uh, to check out many more like it. I try to update every week. Last night I saw a screening of Kevin Close and Dennis Widmeyer's new adaptation of Pet Cemetery. Don't call it a remake because it is a re-adaptation of the 1983 Stephen King novel of the same name. Uh, and in this video, uh, this is going to be the first video of this kind that I've ever done. We're going to do a full spoiler talk about the beginning, middle, and end of this movie. And pair it with uh, the Mary Lambert film adaptation and the book, uh, the source material itself. Uh, see where they differ, see why they differ, and that's that's going to be the, the, the crux of this review. Uh, this is going to be a, a, a Stephen King fan uh, diving into this new adaptation and talking about it. So if you haven't seen the film yet, it's good. That's the that's the takeaway from this video is that I think it's I think it's pretty good. Uh, I think it's definitely worth seeing, worth talking about, especially if you are a King fan. Right off the bat, we're gonna spoil the hell out of this thing. So if you haven't seen it uh, and you want to go in uh, as, as clean as possible without knowing anything, um, go watch one of my other videos because um, those don't have spoilers. But this one definitely does. So Pet Cemetery is a, a, a Stephen King book. It's not one that I grew up with. It's not a it's not a Stephen King book that I'm like, oh, I love this. I remember reading this illicitly uh, as a kid, uh, getting it from the school library. It's one of the ones I came to later. Having seen uh, Mary Lambert's adaptation uh, as a kid, the 1989 film, uh, which is a, a movie that I know is like back and forth with uh, horror fans and King fans uh, in general. But it's a movie I really like. Uh, it's, it's a, it's, I think it's a pretty straight adaptation. It's not, a, it's not a, a King book that I hold any kind of special um, affinity for, even though I know it is a favorite of a lot of people. I, I read it in college. I really liked it. So that's where I'm coming from as a King fan. Uh, this new film, what is most interesting about it, and this, this, I don't, I don't watch trailers, and this actually got spoiled for me before I went into the film, uh, but, uh, you probably know about it just because it's in the trailers, it's on the poster, um, this, this adaptation is more of a remix of the novel and a remix of the 1989 film, uh, it plays with those expectations because, uh, the person killed in the trucking accident is not little Gage Creed, uh, the little boy. And his slightly older sister, uh, Ellie, who gets uh, uh, road killed. Uh, and uh, it, that does change things quite significantly because, because Gage is, is too young to talk. Um, he's just kind of this little, you know, malevolent presence uh, in both the book and the, uh, and the first film when he comes back. Um, but uh, the thing I like most about this movie is that decision to change things, is that decision to remix things. Because I think... Uh, it adds a whole new dynamic to the film. The f just the very fact that some of this stuff that in the book is a little bit more um, esoteric or is a little bit more like to do with like thematics and like Lewis meditating on all the things that he's done wrong uh, in, 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 in trying to bring the dead back to life and the stuff that needs to kind of be like internalized in the book gets to be externalized in the movie uh, through Ellie, through these kind of quick scenes they share uh, uh, with each other before everything goes to hell. Uh, so I think that's a that's an awesome change that the, this movie has made from the book. It does that uh, a couple of other times. It does this it does this thing where um, where it'll play with the fact that you both Kolsch and Ed Widmeyer uh, kind of play with the fact that you know this story, or they assume that you know the story, uh, and they assume that you know the at, least, at the very least know the first film. Uh, so there's all this stuff where you think th something's going one way and then it goes uh, the other just to mess with you. But the ultimate arc of the of the of the film, the ultimate story, is is pretty beat for beat the same. And, and in some ways, uh, it's a uh, in some ways it's a more faithful adaptation than the uh, than the Mary Lambert version because. And this is where stuff I didn't so much like uh, that they that they were just. I feel like they were putting in because they were like, we're going to do a really uh, faithful adaptation. So um, there you get these scenes where um, Jason Clark plays father, um, Lewis Creed. And he, there's a, there's a few scenes where after he brings back church, uh, which that happens just like it happens in the book in the first movie, 
there's scenes where he's like going through newspaper clippings and some backstory that you get in the book that's that's like conversations between him and Judd become like newspaper clippings and all this stuff and it's it's just in and, and and there's discussion of like well what is the physical force or what is the you know um explicitly explained force that is out uh, living out behind uh, the pet cemetery on their property, behind the deadfall, on this kind of rise where you have to go climb and it's pre treacherous and there's stone steps and then you bury something, you bury your dead because you have to be the one to do it and then you bury them down and then they come back to you but they don't come back the same Some because sometimes dead is better. Um, there are these like, th there's like this, this need to be faithful in this movie um, but the movie kind of slows to a standstill so we can have characters discuss exposition which... I don't know. Some people are going to like it. Some people aren't. Uh, it's probably my, my, my least favorite aspect of this movie, which I, I did like and I do think is really cool. Um, and I see why they did it because people are, people are cuckoo for coconut puffs um, as far as needing a reason for their things to happen. If we look at talk about our last video about us, that was kind of the main divide that I was, when I was talking to people after um, having seen the movie where it's like, well, this is, why did, why did this happen? And it, I'm very much a, a, a person where I don't, I don't really, I'm more interested in character and theme um, and performance than I am plot. Um, it's just a lot of plot. Uh, but to each their own. And uh, it's, it's barely, it's not like something that t completely takes you out of the movie. It's nice to know. Um, and it, it, it adds to this, there's this great scene uh, where you, you basically hear the Wendigo and you, like, you think it's going to like pop out at any moment. And I, I really like that, uh, that sequence. So if you, if you had to have that other stuff to have that in there, I think that sequence is aces, so. I think the directors who, who had uh, their previous film, Starry Eyes, uh, is a movie I, I love a whole lot, and it feels like it's been a little while since Starry Eyes. It feels like it's like it's, it's, it's like six or seven years since that movie came out. Um, if you haven't seen Starry Eyes, it's basically a um, paranoid, satanic panic version of A Star is Born. Um, and it, it was, it's a movie that, 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 that feels incredibly ahead of its time. It predates the Me Too movement. It predates a lot of this stuff, and it's talking about um, similar things, and it's a really great film. These are guys that are coming from uh, the small budget indie horror scene and are getting their kind of first at bat uh, with this uh, big studio Stephen King adaptation movie, and it's, it's like, I, I can't imagine things going better for them, because I, I think, um, I know a lot of people love the It adaptation, um, and I really liked it too, but I, I think this is just as good, if not better. It's, it's, it's a movie that feels like it's a lot of different people, a lot of different talented people coming together uh, to almost make it better than the sum of its parts because it's the story uh, I feel like the audience really knows well. The movie feels like the audience really knows well and it's playing with that. Um, but you've got um, not only the directors, but you've got uh, the cinematographer, uh, Laurie Rose, who um, I'm a huge Ben Wheatley fan um, and he's kind of Ben Wheatley's constant, one of Ben Wheatley's constant collaborators along with Amy Jump. Um, and his cinematography really shines here. One thing I will say to go along with the cinematography, it, this is a movie that I feel like I would, would absolutely love if, if it felt a little bit more regional, if it felt a little bit more New England. Um, there's no real attempt to do the accents. There's like one scene where it feels like Jason Clark is doing a Boston accent because uh, he's a, um, a doctor moving up upstate to Maine uh, to get away from it all uh, from Boston. Uh, uh, no real effort to it to towards like making this a, a regional film or a regional feeling film. John Lithgow plays uh, Judd Crandall, which is is kind of the, the the toughest bit of casting because uh, I know horror fans are united in their love of Fred Gwynn and his portrayal of Judd Crandall. Uh, but I, th I, I I this is gonna be one of two. Uh, controversial things I say in this movie about the changes made to um, I think John Lithgow is a is a better Judd Crandall I, I think he's um, it's less his, uh, his he's not doing the shtick he's not doing the aya and the uh, uh, sometimes dad is better he's not doing the 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 main the quote-unquote like Stephen King main accent which as someone who lived in New England for for all, close to 10 years um, I know the Boston accent uh, but I only know the main accent from Stephen King. So that's, it's one of those things where it's like, it, it could be a great main accent, it could be terrible, but I, in my, I know in my head when I read Stephen King books, that's, I'm the only one doing it. So, but the, what's great about John Lithgow's performance is just, he's, he's just a very, very empathic actor. And it's, I don't know if that's Harry and the Hendersons or what, but he's just, he's, he's like, he's a big guy. Uh, and you see him, he has a lot, he shares a lot of scenes with Ellie. 
uh, and it's just he's just like he's he's just kind of this this big, physically imposing but very seemingly um, very uh, warm presence. Uh, and I think he, he kind of nails it. He's was, was a really good bit of casting and a really good performance. Uh, Rachel is a role that is like is kind of a stealth uh, heavy hitter in the Pet Cemetery story because uh, she's she's not really the she's kind of secondary protagonist to Lewis since we like filter the book through his his perspective. But she gets a lot of she has a lot of trauma in her past with with her sister Zelda. Amy Semitz, who I've seen seen in a lot of things. This is like really this feels like a, a breakout role for her because. It's, if you look her up on IMDb, you kind of know her. You've seen her in a lot of different things. Um, but this was the f this was a, a movie that kind of made me sit forward because she's she's got a really interesting screen presence and um, and like I said, she has to do a lot of emotional heavy lifting uh, in a movie that is that is moving maybe too fast. This movie's an hour forty minutes, and like I said, they're trying their best to get everything from the novel in there. Um, it, it feels like maybe there's a version of this movie um, because, like I said. They kill Ellie instead of Gage, um, and there's almost no. The movie doesn't hide that at all because there's, 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 you see Gage in the car uh, on their drive up uh, to Maine, and then you see Gage maybe in one more scene, like where he's in like kind of his uh, his crib, and, th and then there's no real before they get to the to the to the bus. There's no real attempt to be like to faking you out of being like, oh, actually we're gonna kill Gage, or, like Ellie is the kid that you see the most. Ellie is the kid that you that you empathize with the most. Ellie is uh, played by uh, a young actor, uh, Jete Lawrence, or Jete Lawrence. I'm not sure exactly how to say that. It's got it's got a, a accent on it, so I'm useless. But uh, as far as uh, as far as uh, kid actors go, as far as child actors go, she's she's awesome, and she has to carry a lot of this movie because she's not only has to be sweet little girl uh, Ellie, she has to be uh, straight up psycho, Wendigo possessed murderer uh, Ellie. And she's she's great in both, and she's especially good in these really um, uh, later in the film. There's these real kind of dark comedy moments that she has to excel in, and she's really good. Uh, she gets like big laughs, which sounds weird to say in a movie that's about like dead cats and dead kids, uh, and, uh, and 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 regret and grief and dying before your time, and uh, and and making terrible irresponsible choices, even though you know. They are not the right thing to do in the moment. Uh, as a fan, as a Stephen King fan, I really like it. And as a Stephen King nerd, and this is where this gets real, real uh, geeky, I did a little video series uh, on this channel where I talked about reading The Dark Tower for the first time or trying to go through The Dark Tower the first time. I did finish reading the books. Uh, I just didn't finish making all the videos for the books, so I think I got up about to the wastelands and then I stopped making videos for them. Um, but one of the big things in The Dark Tower, if you've read The Dark Tower and you know, uh, and this is a slight spoiler for if you haven't read them, but they're great and you should. Um, but it's it's just kind of this remixing and and redoing of Stephen King's world and characters and how how it kind of finds a way to compartmentalize and justify the fact that there are all these different versions of the stories, the fact that there are these readaptations and the fact that uh, Ka is a wheel and this every every kind of reality is just another spin of the wheel and there are infinite realities. Uh, so what I like about Pet Cemetery and this adaptation of Pet Cemetery is it has some, without really being explicit about it, and without almost, I'm almost hesitant to say it because you're almost not working from the text at that point. But there are some, there's some dream sequences where he's walking out in the middle of nowhere just from a doorway, which to me feels like um, drawing of the three down to a, down to literally the cover art. For, um, there's the fact that instead of Gage dying, Ellie dies. There's that all that knowing, uh, characters almost knowing when something is gonna go wrong and then they do the opposite thing. There's the scene where Judd's gonna get his, uh, his Achilles tendon swiped uh, like he would in the original film and he, he kind of avoids it because he knows that that might be happening. Uh, so there's something very Dark Tower-esque about remixing a movie, uh, re redoing a Stephen King property um, and then tweaking things slightly and making the characters make different choices. Um, so I really do appreciate that and I really do think it's great. Uh, the one other change from the book uh, is the ending, and I don't 100% want to talk about like the last shot of the film, uh, but like that uh, dark comedy element I was talking about, the movie ends differently from uh, both uh, other versions of it, uh, and I think it's uh, it's up there with The Mist, and maybe maybe I like it better than The Mist is The Mist change ending, the Frank Darabont version of The Mist, and how it changes to the ending or adds an ending. Um, I actually think this is. Uh, the ending of the 2019 version of Pet Cemetery, 
I actually like better than than both of the other endings. Uh, I think it's I think it's uh, really sinister. Uh, all, uh, where the other books end as downers, this is still a downer, but it it's literally almost a joke. It's almost a punchline, and I, I think it's it's really sick and great. Uh, so kudos to the screenwriter. This week's book recommendation, since I have already talked too long, uh, it's going to be a quickie. But uh, I, I, am, I am currently halfway through and really enjoying uh, Andy Davidson's uh, kind of Western vampire novel, In the Valley of the Sun. It's really, really great. Uh, I know this book came out a little while ago, but it's had a little bit of a resurgence on like Bookstagram and Twitter. And uh, people who are into books are kind of just talking about it now because I think it got a new edition. Um, but I, I think it's really, really great. It's kind of got a... Um, Kind of got to like let the right one in meets uh, meets near dark vibe to it. So if you like those films and though and that book, um, you will uh, you'll really enjoy Andy Davison's In the Valley of the Sun. It is it is it is Southern fried Western vampires. It's very very good uh, Texas based and it kind of jumps all around time periods. But I, I think I think it's great and I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how it ends. I'm Adam Caesar. If you like this video, please subscribe to see more videos like it. Uh, if you want to find out more about me and my work, I, I am a horror novelist, short story writer, sometimes comic books, sometimes screenplays. When they let me. Um, those are my books up there. Those are some of my books up there. If you want to find out more about them, you can join my mailing list by clicking the link down below, uh, and I will send you a free couple short stories, a free novel sample, uh, and you'll be able to try it out and see uh, if I'm a hack or not, which I don't think I am. I think I'm pretty good. But, uh, yep. Have a great week, and I will talk to you next week where I promise we're done with all this talking about new movies. We're going to talk about something from the 70s. We're going to talk about a couple movies from the 70s that are crazy and some of the best... Uh, Blu-ray releases of the year, if not the best Blu-ray release of the year, will be the next video that I do.